Gideon v. Wainwright by Emily Duncan and Maddie Crane. The case concerns the petitioner, Clarence Earl Gideon, and the prosecutor, Louis L. Wainwright, who represented the state of Florida. The original jurisdiction was held in Bay County Circuit Court, Florida. Clarence Earl Gideon was known as a drifter and only received an education up to the eighth grade. Gideon was charged in the Florida State Court with a felony of breaking into a pool room on June 3, 1961, intending to commit a misdemeanor offense in Panama City. When Gideon showed up to court without a lawyer, he requested that the Fl Florida State Court give him one. His request was denied, however, because under the Sixth Amendment of the United States, the court is only required to appoint a lawyer in capital cases. Gideon then proceeded to represent himself in court, not for his felony, but because he was refused an attorney. Gideon was found guilty and was sentenced to five years in prison for the offense. After Gideon was found guilty, he filed a habeas corpus to the Florida Supreme Court because he believed the ruling was unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment. The court denied his habeas corpus relief. Gideon filed a handwritten writ of certiorari to the Supreme Court of the United States and argued that the trial court violated his constitutional right to be represented by counsel. The, the Supreme Court decided to take on the case to decide whether the right to counsel under the Sixth Amendment applies to defendants in state court. The case was argued on January 15, 1963, and decided on March 18, 1963. Before Gideon v. Wainwright, another case was brought before the Supreme Court concerning the refusal to appoint counsel. In this case, named Betts v. Brady, the court decided that refusing to appoint counsel to an indigent defendant charged with a felony in a state court did not violate the 14th Amendment. After a conference over Gideon's case, however, the Supreme Court overruled Betts v. Brady and unanimously decided that the Sixth Amendment guarantees the right to a fair trial and therefore also applies to the state courts. Gideon was sentenced five years in state prison for his original felony of breaking into a pool room with intent to damage or steal property. While in prison, Gideon filed a habeas corpus that the court violated his constitutional rights to a lawyer under the Sixth Amendment. The American Civil Liberties Union filed an amicus curiae brief urging the reversal of Betts v. Brady. The state of Florida argued that the Sixth Amendment that allows an indigent to be appointed counsel does not apply to non-capital offenses and that Gideon should not be appointed a lawyer. After holding their oral arguments, Justice L. Hugo Black delivered the opinion of the court, which was a 9-0 to zero majority. The Supreme Court believed that the framers placed a high value on the ideals that the accused should have the right to a proper form of defense, and that right must be respected. The court decided that it was consistent with the Constitution that every petitioner be appointed a lawyer if they can't afford or find one on their own. Justice William O. Douglas wrote a concurring opinion where he argued that the 14th Amendment does not give a watered-down version of the Bill of Rights. Justice Tom C. Clark wrote a separate concurring opinion that the Constitution does not say that the accused may have rights to a proper form of defense in some cases, but not in others. It must be equal all across the board. Justice John M. Harlan also wrote a separate concurring opinion where he argued that the court's previous decision to deny Gideon a form of defense was unjust because no case deserves different or special treatment in comparison to other state or federal cases. This is a landmark case because the ability of a country to protect its most vulnerable citizens is a detrimental trait. By unanimously ruling in favor of Gideon, 
the U.S. protected a defenseless criminal against a strong state and illustrated that even small men can stand up against a big power.